everyone, and welcome to Ascended Masters 101, where we talk all about the teachings of the Ascended Masters. The topic of today's video is probably one of the most important things we will ever discuss on this channel, aside from perhaps the use of the violet flame, which you can learn about here, because today we're going to discuss the ultimate purpose of life. If you've ever taken psychology or philosophy classes, you'll know that great minds have been struggling with the primordial questions of existence for thousands of years. Who are we? Where did we come from? Where are we going and how do we get there? Essentially, what's the ultimate purpose of life and how do we achieve it? And I feel like a lot of people come to this point on their spiritual path where they feel like life has got to be about more than just the eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die kind of philosophy. And I see this all the time. It's this idea that you want to make as much money as you can so that you have as much free time as possible so that you can fill that free time having as much fun as you possibly can until one day you die, which no one wants to really think about. And it's this kind of like you know, live for yourself and your own fun kind of existence, which there's nothing wrong with that. But nobody that I've personally met who lives by that philosophy seems like they're truly happy. For those who are ready for a deeper, more meaningful existence, the Ascended Masters explain that life is actually the complete opposite. Life is brimming with infinite purpose and meaning in which each day is a precious opportunity to take another sacred step towards our soul's ultimate purpose in life. So let's unpackage these deep life questions with the answers from the Ascended Masters. First of all, who are we? We are souls. Well, let me rephrase that. We are old souls. Because our journey did not just begin in this lifetime. We have lived through many ages and have had tons of experiences. We've had lives of wealth and lives of poverty, lives of success and of failure. We've been saints. We've been sinners. We've lived through the rise and fall of many civilizations. But before all that, our souls were first born in the heart of God and we descended to earth as a spirit spark from God. But we were brand spanking new and God wanted us to learn and grow and evolve as souls to gain a certain amount of mastery and learn certain lessons before we graduated from the schoolroom of earth and returned back to the heart of God through the ritual of the ascension or graduation, if you will. And this is exactly what happened for the first three root races, which are major groups of souls that took on embodiment on the earth. They had seven lifetimes in a male body, seven lifetimes in a female body, learned the lessons they needed to, and graduated back to heaven. Now, the trouble came with the fourth root race, when Lucifer rebelled and was cast out of heaven by Michael the Archangel, as we read about in the Bible. But it wasn't just him. He took a whole third of the angels of heaven with him, and where was he cast out to? The earth. Now, the unpolluted schoolroom of Earth was tainted with the rebellious and imperfect consciousness and thought patterns of Lucifer and his fellow fallen angels. Long, long story short, the evolutionary process of the souls on Earth, including the fourth, fifth, and sixth root races, got messed with as they were influenced by these fallen angels. They started making negative karma and had to take more and more lifetimes to balance the negative karma that they made, learn their lessons, and still try to make it back home to God in a now much less than perfect world. It's like still trying to graduate with honors in what has become a really bad school district in which hardly anyone listens to the teachers, and, and spitballs and paper airplanes and all sorts of distractions are flying through the classroom. Now, of course, this is a major simplification with all kinds of details left out, and you can read the full story in the book Fallen Angels Among Us, but it gives you the gist, and it explains why many of us feel like we've been on this planet for a really long time. So, who are we? We are souls trying desperately to make it back to our native homes of light in the heaven world in what has become a rather sticky world to get out of. But, with the Ascended Masters so readily available to help us in this age, we have the incredible opportunity to claim our victory in this life if we choose. More on that later. So, next major question. Where did we come from? Originally, we all came from the heart of God in the heaven world. 
Although our physical eyes cannot see it, this world is filled with myriads of beings who glow with light and love. Incredible archangels, angels, Elohim, cosmic beings, ascended masters, great beings of the elements, masters of earth, air, fire, and water, and tiny nature spirits known as elementals. The heaven world is vast. As Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. These realms of light and love are where we came from and where we are destined to return to, which answers the next question, where are we going? We can only see the realm of the Ascended Masters through the eyes of the soul as we center in our hearts and raise our consciousness. But as we place our attention on these realms of light and get to know and learn from the incredible beings who live at these levels, the vibrations of our being will line up more and more with the vibrations of the heaven world. As it says in the Bible, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. We can learn incredible lessons from these heavenly beings in classrooms and retreats in the heaven world, in between lifetimes, as well as while our bodies sleep at night. But we won't be permanently reunited with our homes and friends of light in heaven until we pass our spiritual tests gain a certain amount of mastery, and earn our freedom from the rounds of rebirth through the ascension. So lastly, how do we get there? So how do we get back to God once and for all? By making our ascension. By graduating from the schoolroom of earth. By following in the footsteps of countless others who have walked the path of the ascension before us. The ascension isn't just the goal for one age or one race or or one religion. It is and always has been the goal of life for sons and daughters of God throughout cosmos since the beginning of creation because it is the path of spiritual evolution. And so the graduates hail from all over the globe and have been the great lights of the ages, the sung and unsung saints and sages from East and West. In fact, there are many more ascended beings than there are people in physical embodiment like you and I. The Bible records a few of the many who have ascended into the light. On page 12 of the Path to Your Ascension, we read a brief list, quote, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Elijah ascended into heaven in a chariot of fire. Melchizedek, Mary the mother of Jesus, John the Beloved, Gautama Buddha, Zarathustra, Confucius, St. Therese of Lisieux, and Pope John the Twenty-Third are only a few of the many ascended saints and hosts of heaven." Quote. Once we make our ascension, we become an ascended master or an ascended lady master. So who are the ascended masters? On page 15 of the book Path to Your Ascension, we read, quote, The ascended masters are simply people who have walked the earth as you are now walking the earth, and who have re-entered the consciousness of God. They are the saints robed in white mentioned in Revelation. They have faced the same problems and trials, grief and joy as we are facing today. Ascended masters are important to us because they have proven cosmic laws, which we are in the process of proving. End quote. By the way, some examples of these laws are the law of cycles, the law of karma, the law of transcendence, and the law of correspondences. You can read more about these in the book, The Path to Immortality. So, continuing with our quote. The Ascended Masters know we can make it because they made it, often in more difficult situations than those we face today. There have been dark ages in the world history where the Ascended Masters were forbidden to appear as teachers of mortals. Each one who ascended in those periods had to walk by faith and succeeded only by the love flame burning within his heart." The ascended masters are part of the saints or ascended hosts of heaven. They inhabit the planes of spirit or the heaven world and they minister to us, the children of God on earth. They show us that we can achieve immortality by proving the laws of God and by fulfilling the requirements of the ascension. If you have ever heard of El Moria, he is a well-loved and well-known Ascended Master, and he is offered to be the guru, or the teacher, of many souls who are starting in earnest on their path to the Ascension. 
If you'd like to get to know more about him and maybe strike up a relationship with him, I suggest the book Chila on the Path. It's written by El Moria. I was looking for a way to teach these principles to our daughter, so I put together a simple little song for her that you might find helpful too. The goal of life is to ascend. The goal, the goal of life is to ascend to God. The earth's a school. The earth, the earth's a school. The earth is where we learn how to ascend to God. Moria El, oh Moria, Moria El, teaches us how to ascend to God. The goal of life is to ascend. The goal, the goal of life is to ascend to God. Serapis Bey, the Ascended Master who especially teaches us about the Ascension, explains that making progress towards your Ascension is like climbing a pyramid. He explains that we're all climbing the pyramid of the Ascension. The sides of the pyramid look smooth, but they're really large blocks of stone, individual steps that take you to the summit. Our thoughts, feelings, and actions are all steps by which we are walking toward the apex of our own pyramid. Now, we don't scale this all at once. Instead, we ascend a little bit each day. Just like the pyramids of Giza, some steps on our pyramid may be broken, weathered, and even missing. I'm sure we can all draw plenty of analogies between this image and the rough spots and imperfections in our own lives. The Ascended Masters explain that life isn't always a constantly ascending spiral with steady progress up the pyramid. At times we have to stop and pause to catch our breath, or we may stumble and slip down a step or two. Amoria teaches us, quote, Do not then decry the fact that you must of necessity make some mistakes. Do not remain upon the ground when you fall or stumble. Arise at once and proceed onward. Page 32 on Path to Your Ascension. So what happens when someone makes their ascension? In Chapter 6 of The Path to Your Ascension, this process is explained really beautifully. I'll summarize it briefly here. When you ascend, the appearance of age drops away and your magnetism and energy becomes the unlimited power of God pulsing through your being. The dross and imperfection of your physical body, your thoughts and your feelings drop away and they're replaced by their divine counterparts. Your feelings become charged by the love of God and the angels. Your mind is imbued with the diamond shining mind of God. Your physical appearance will be transformed instantly into a glorified spiritual body. Your consciousness of your physical body will cease and you will achieve a state of weightlessness. The God flame will transmute all of your body processes and systems and they will go through a great metamorphosis. The blood in your veins changes to a liquid golden light. Your throat chakra will glow with an intense blue-white light. The spiritual eye in the center of your forehead, known as the third eye, becomes an elongated god flame that rises upwards. Your garments are completely consumed and you take on the appearance of being dressed in a white robe, which is the seamless garment of the Christ. Your flesh becomes transparent. Your veins are filled with golden pink light. Your hair may appear as pure gold and your eyes may become a beautiful electric blue or pale violet. The very atoms of your being become lighter and in the twinkling of an eye, you are changed. We read on page 49, quote, Through the ascension, the son becomes one with the father. He can no longer remain tied to the earth, for he is filled with the light of the sun, and he has no further need for a physical body. The ascension is a raising action that affects the entire being of man. In this weightless condition, man's buoyant, God-free form can no longer be bound to earth. Lighter and lighter grows the physical form, and with the weightlessness of helium, the body begins to rise into the atmosphere, the gravitational pull being loosened. Therefore, he must rise into the air where a cloud of white light receives him out of mortal sight, and he is again united with the Father, the I Am Presence. 
This is the glory of the ascension currents. It is the glory of attainment which Jesus demonstrated for us, end quote. Isn't that incredible? When you ascend, you're still you, just the free, loving, wise, powerful version of yourself that's free forever from the constraints of human existence and the lower human consciousness. This process happens in the Ascension Temple, which is a spiritual retreat at Luxor on the Nile River. Serapis Bay is the hierarch of this retreat, and it is a place where souls can travel to learn about the Ascension and how to attain this ultimate goal. We read on page 50, quote, At the close of their final embodiment of service to mankind, candidates for the Ascension come to the Ascension Temple to receive the initiation that will reunite them with their God Presence. Accompanied by ascended and unascended masters, the candidate is bidden by the master of the retreat to stand in the center of the ascension flame. At that point, the individual's cosmic tone is sounded, and the flame from Alpha is released from above, and the flame from Omega rises from below. The moment the individual's tone is sounded, and simultaneously with the action of the flame, the seraphim in the outer court trumpet to the victory of the ascending soul with a magnificent rendition of the triumphal march from Aida. Quote, the seraphim that I just mentioned are spoken of in the Bible and are also known as the seraphic bands. They are angels of purity that serve under Justinius, the captain of seraphic bands. They serve at the altar of God and at the ascension temple at Luxor. Now, Aida is an opera by Verdi that has four acts. The Triumphal March is an incredible, amazing musical piece from this opera. I'll post a link to this piece below, and I highly recommend that you take a few minutes after this video to listen to it. So, continuing with our quote talking about the Triumphal March, quote, The discipline that is the keynote of this retreat is felt in the Seraphim's precise golden tone rendition of this piece. It is the march of your victory. Each time you hear those trumpets, you can know that it commemorates the moment when you will step onto the dais, which is a raised platform, in the center of the Ascension Temple. With seraphim surrounding the dais and all the brothers and sisters of the Ascension Temple encircling you, you will rise in the ritual of the Ascension, an ascended master immortal. End quote. When I was about 11, I remember looking at all the volumes of books by the Ascended Masters on my mom's bookshelf, and I remember thinking to myself, I, I really want to make my ascension, and there's so much valuable knowledge here, but is there a short list somewhere that summarizes the basic things I need to do in order to ascend? I asked my mom, and she said, absolutely, it's in chapter 5 of the book, The Path to Your Ascension. She gave me the book and opened it to the right page, and I was just so thrilled to see this clear, concise list in front of me. It was like gold. It was like something my soul had just been waiting for. I didn't understand all of them, especially the requirement to raise the kundalini. I was like, what's a kundalini? <laughs> but as I studied them over time, things made more sense and I learned the terms that are used. I will just list them in this video, but we will cover each requirement, what they mean, and how to make progress towards meeting them in upcoming videos. So here we go. To make your ascension, you must balance your threefold flame, align your four lower bodies, attain mastery on all seven rays, achieve mastery over outer conditions, fulfill your divine plan. Transmute the electronic belt, raise the kundalini, and balance 51% of your karma. And those are the eight requirements. It's a lot, but it's nothing that can't be done. In fact, the Ascended Masters have told us that we can make our ascension in this life or the next in certain extenuating circumstances if we will really apply ourselves. Amoria says, you can make it if you try. And even though it will take all of our effort and self-sacrifice, Moria tells us, the trek upward is worth the inconvenience. Now, 
the possibility of ascending in this life is amazing and something that when I heard it, it lit a fire under me like nothing else ever had before. I mean, talk about something to live for and to strive towards. Forget about a fancy house or fame or prestige as a life goal. How about graduation from the planet and permanent reunion with God as a life goal? Another thing that really motivates me is the realization that if I did have to re-embody, there is no guarantee that I would know about the ascension or the requirements I must meet to make my ascension. I may not even know about the Ascended Masters or the tests that I need to pass in order to make it home free. I'll be searching for the meaning of life all over again, and not having this knowledge is not a chance I want to take. So I, for one, am super motivated to make this my last lifetime, and I hope you're motivated too. In the Keepers of the Flame lessons, I remember reading something to the effect of, The day and the hour of thy ascension does depend on how you fill the hours and the days leading up to that date. End quote. Essentially, life is short, and we can make our ascension in this life more likely if we will use each precious day to take another step towards our goal, no matter how small. All of a sudden, your life is infused with meaning, joy, challenge, and purpose as you make it your life's goal to find and reunite with God. A songwriter and a good friend of mine, Terry Kennedy, put these themes to music in a song called, Who Were You? Fortunately for us, it's on YouTube. Here's the link, and I'll post it in the comments below as well. If you want to dive into learning about the Ascension, I obviously highly recommend the book I've been referencing this whole video, The Path to Your Ascension by Anise Booth. It's written in a friendly, conversational style and is based directly on the teachings of the Ascended Masters. The second book I recommend is the book Dozier on the Ascension, which is a compilation of letters written to each of us from the Ascended Master Serapis Bay, the Master of the Ascension himself, instructing us on how to climb the Pyramid of the Ascension. In addition, Summit University offers an awesome online course on the Ascension that has a free unit that you can check out. I'll post links to all of the above in the comment section below this video. The last thing I want to say is that we can and should work diligently towards earning our Ascension, but ultimately the Ascension is a gift that's given to us by the grace of God. It's given to us more by God's grace than by our works, although both are necessary. In upcoming videos, we'll be diving into each of the requirements for the Ascension, so keep an eye out for those. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, for liking and subscribing, and God bless you all.